Hello, everybody. You can have your seat. We're going to start the meeting tonight. Folks, if the back, you can have your seat. Andy. Did you get did you get your bit of tie, Andy? Did you get your dinner? Go, go get your dinner. All right. All right. So I know that you guys all are very, very well fed now. So we all want to go home and take a nap. But we have we have some 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 business to take care of tonight. And we're gonna plow right through it. Can you can everybody in the back hear me okay? Perfect. Okay. I usually don't use a microphone, but last time we uh, we had a, a couple of people in the back of one of the microphones, so we put the microphone over there, so you guys can hear it, and I can't hear it. So uh, hello, Jose. All right. So we're going to go ahead and get right into it. I, I want to first off thank Wonderful Restaurant on Woodman and, and Moore Park. They they have been in the uh, stable community for years and years and years and years. I asked Jules how many times they provided us with food, and I think it's a dozen times at least more. Yeah. So again, uh, Nabil and uh, and his crew over there are fantastic. Nabil would have been here tonight, but he's got a sold out crowd, so he's over there. But uh, thank you, Carnival Restaurant. Okay, the board. You guys want to come on up? Okay. If you guys have questions for our city attorney, there are some the questions. There's some. Uh, uh, sheets at the back. If you can fill those out and just wave your hand, and somebody will come and pick them up and bring them up to me. So during the meeting, um, a lot of you have sent your, your questions in beforehand, which we appreciate. Um, and so, anyway, let's have our, our board of directors uh, come on up and introduce yourselves. Come on up. Hi, I'm Jay Weitzler. I'm secretary of the organization, and I'm also Involved with uh, the Hillside Federation and our contact. Speak, we'll speak right in. Yeah, speak right in. So, does it better? Yeah. No, it's all. How's it? Yeah. I'm Jay Weitzler. I am secretary of the organization, and I'm also the liaison with the Hillside Federation and Buckley State. And thank you all for coming. Today. Hi, I'm Maria Calvin, and I uh, am the chair of the Legislative Committee. And vice president, oh, and you, the president of the organization, along with Bob. Hi, I'm Bob Anderson. I'm the vice president, along with Maria, and chair of the Transportation Committee. Yes. Hey, everybody, welcome. From the middle there. Oh, okay. Hi, everybody. Welcome. I'm Anson Segoyan, membership chair and co chair of our airport committee. Uh, it's great to see everybody. Keep coming to our meetings. We love seeing you and love having this support. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Sean Griswold. I'm a member of the Van Nuys Airport Committee and the Homeless Committee. Thanks for joining. Hi, I'm Come in, so stand over here so you can say hello to the folks that are on the Zoom call tonight. What? I am Larry Slade. I am chair of the Homelessness Committee. Awesome. Thank you. That's our great report. Um, you guys can keep a better uh, on that. So, as you all know, we are all volunteers and we fight for quality. Keep Sherman Oaks the great town that it, that it is. We are the largest uh, uh, homeowner association in Southern California, and we've got a great membership. You know, you know, a lot of you guys are on the Zoom call tonight. A lot of you guys come to these meetings almost every time. We really appreciate it, and we're so happy that we're back in person meetings. Um, uh, Barry, actually, Barry from uh, the county supervisor's office. She is. She was supposed to be here tonight, but she said that uh, she's not feeling well. But she said that uh, she sent me an email saying that the uh, math mandates and the, that the COVID is they're ending all of their things at the end of this month. So that's a great thing. So um, anyway, let's get through some other business. As far as we've got, uh, I'm going to call you guys and and just set up here in a queue. We've got a senior lease. Uh, give her a report. We have uh, Andy. Come on, Andy's keeping you up. Say, 
Um, and then we've got uh, Andy Sullivan, the neighborhood prosecutor's office. Uh, Aaron, are you here from the mayor's office? Did not see you. Okay. Uh, Sean, I don't see Sean Reagan either from the con congressman's office. I think everyone's scared of Heidi's here, so they didn't show up. And then do, do we have uh, anyone from uh, the assembly member's office tonight? No? Okay. Uh, and then Ryan's here, so Ryan will be after that. And then uh, that's it. We'll get into some other points. Thank you, Matt. Good evening, everybody. I'm Officer Sadat. I'm, I'm the senior lead officer for the southern portion of Sherman Oaks. I cover everything south of Ventura towards Mulholland between Coldwater Canyon and Sepulveda. Uh, and I'd like to congratulate our new captain. She's our patrol our commanding officer for Van Nuys Division. Uh, captain from the coast. Uh, she took over Captain Hearn's uh, spot. So uh, she's our new captain for Van Nuys Division. Um, like uh, right now, uh, there's nothing much to report. Uh, most of the stuff that we've been having is mostly property crimes, uh, burglary from motor vehicles, uh, just real basic stuff. Do not leave anything in your vehicles. Make sure they're it's locked and secure. Lock and hide it. Keep keep it. We had a couple of burglaries, uh, but we have uh, uh, identified suspects who they are. Uh, but for the most part, uh, everything on Ventura Boulevard, we are working with city officials with the homeless uh, issues that we've been experiencing. Good evening, everyone. Um, Senior Lead Officer Mariana Romo, Romo, and I cover the northern part of Terminal, from Sepulveda to Magnolia Chandler to Coldwater and some parts of Ventura Boulevard. I have the same type of uh, crimes in my area, most it's property crimes, not really any violent crimes just like the northern part of uh, Van Nuys. Um, I am experiencing a lot of, um, a, a little bit of uh, grand theft autos. And a lot of them are tangent parking. And from the reports that I see is underground parking lots. So if you guys have neighbors or um, have any friends that have that park their vehicles underground um, and they park their vehicles front, in the front and in the rear, sometimes we leave our keys somewhere in between, these criminals know that. Try to make it hard for them because once they see the keys, once they have that extra clicker for the underground parking lot, all that is there. So please remember to don't leave anything of value in, in plain sight, make it hard, make it, um, don't be the next victim. Take everything inside, don't leave your keys, don't leave um, your windows down. Um, these are just reminders. These are stuff that can be preventable. So thank you very much again, everyone, and uh, happy to be here. Hi, everyone. My name is Andy Coleman. For those of you who don't know me, I'm your neighborhood prosecutor from the city attorney's office. We're lucky that we have the city attorney here with us. So I'm not going to talk too much. I just want you all to know my job is to handle public safety issues, quality of life crimes. And, if, and if any issue that's basically not handled by the typical avenues of prosecution or government intervention, if you need to reach me, my email is with all of your board members and the senior lead officers, but it's also andy.solliman at lacity.org. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. My name is Ryan Ahari. I'm the Sherman Oaks Field Deputy for Councilmember Nithya Rahman. Uh, I wanted to share some office updates given all of the historic rainfall that we've had recently. The council member is leading an LADWP town hall. This is for our entire district, so folks can hear what's going on at DWP and allow for questions and answers from the audience. This is going to be on March 22nd on Zoom, 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. Uh, we're also co-hosting a cleanup with the Sherman Oaks Business Improvement District. We're going to be at the corner of Ventura and Van Nuys on Monday, March 20th. 9.30 in the morning is when registration occurs. 10 to 12 is when the cleanup. We're cleaning up in the big territory. So we're looking for volunteers. If you want to volunteer, please come and let me know. We'd love as much help as we could possibly get. We're looking for 30 volunteers. Uh, I also wanted to mention that we are partnering with the Chandler Elementary PTA for their first hygiene kit drive. They are collecting new products like soap, deodorant, shampoo, towels, and all of this will be organized between the days of March 13th to the 21st. You can go directly to the school to make these donations. 
the wonderful school children on March 22nd are then joining with the music kids, which will then go to our unhoused community throughout our council district. Finally, if you did not see what is going on in the back, we are along with Stephen and Claudia back there are giving away wonderful compost pails. These are pails that can be placed on your kitchen counter. We all were supposed to start composting in January of this year. Uh, if it's on your kitchen counter, they're totally free. Please just sign up on our clipboard. Um, I just wanted to mention we've given out over 2,300 of these, and we are the only council office giving them out to this amount of scale. If you need to contact me, uh, I have business cards. You can call me or text me. You can also email me as well. You'll be back there in the board tonight. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Brian. Also, uh, next, or our, our next meeting, usually I don't announce this until the end, but our, at our next meeting, we have a council member, uh, Nithya Brahma, will be here. So uh, make sure you guys mark the calendar. Nithya Brahma. Oh, I'm sorry. Nithya Brahma is going to be our speaker at our next month. So, uh, okay, so we have a few more uh, reports right now, and I want to let everybody know that. When you uh, hear these board reports, if something compels you to want to get more active in Sherman Oaks Homeowners Association, go to the board member who's giving that report. Again, there's there's a lot of work that dealing with homeless, there's a lot of work with the different things that we do. So if you want to get more involved, come up to any of the board members. If you don't remember who's chairing this committee, or if you want to do something, uh, definitely, 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 we'd love to have you. So um, we're going to have Larry, uh, Tom Blick first. Um, then Larry Slade, and then Maria, and then we'll get right into our new uh, city attorney. Good evening, everyone. Tom Glick. I didn't get to introduce myself on number two um, because he had me back doing sergeant of arms. So I'm also the sergeant of arms. Speaking of the Speaking of the mic. Oh, I don't need to speak of the mic. I'm loud enough. Um, two things. Um, I am a, I'm a board member now of, I don't know if everybody's familiar with it. I think you probably have seen some of the of the work, uh, Left Main Sherman Oaks. It's an organization that is dedicated to um, hiring local artists to painting um, our utility boxes around Sherman Oaks. And I don't know if you've seen them, but some, I think they have about 300, 300, yeah. Um, I'm here. Okay. Sorry, I'm not used to my oh. um, So if, I would encourage everybody to go to their website. It's, it's Left. Let me make Sherman Oaks. It's a wonderful cause. Um, they, you know, they can use volunteer. They can use money. If you know any local artists, um, and you know, I hope this program goes uh, to wide because it is a very important program. We're trying to get down only only as painting the city boxes, like the uh, like the ones that are for the street lights. Um, we're going to try to get AT and T on board, but they have been very resistant. They have a lot of the boxes around the street. That would be great to be painted, but it is a great program. I encourage you to go to the website and look at all of the different boxes that have been painted. You probably see one or two around the neighborhood, but it does employ local artists because they do get money for each of the boxes that are painted. Um, and uh, it is a really good program. That's number one. Number two, when I didn't introduce myself as a board member, I wanted to let everybody know I'm on the land use uh, committee, planning land use with Marshall. Um, Larry and Maria are also part of the committee. I'm part of the Intergovernmental Relations Committee too, excuse me, the Legislative Committee. I wanted to call attention to everybody about um, our community plan update that is going on. Um, it started in 2017 for the Southwest Southwest and Southeast Valley to follow in 2018, I believe. Um, a lot of people don't know what's going on, but what the city is going to be coming in and doing in the next two or three years um, is proposing zoning changes within our community that are probably contrary to what a lot of people want to see, especially uh, our single family neighborhoods are a threat. Um, so I'm urging people just to pay attention to what the city is doing regarding the community plan update and the upzoning they're proposing for um, the Southwest and the Southeast Valley, which includes Sherman Oaks, Studio City, North Hollywood, Van Nuys, and Studio City. I said Studio City, going to pass, excuse me. So just keep that in mind. I keep giving updates, but the city has kind of been slow since COVID on doing these updates. So sorry for not speaking. I'm done. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Bob. 
Um, my name is Larry Slade, and I have the honor of chairing the Homelessness Committee for the Sherman Oaks Homeowners Association. Um, I have a couple of committee members here tonight that are very helpful. I want to acknowledge uh, Sean Kurzweil and John Eisen and Ryan Muckenthaler, and I see uh, Kara and Howard. And so thank everybody for, for helping. We're really ramping up and getting a lot of interest in trying to address a very specific part of homelessness, that specific subset of the group of homeless that are, are dangerous either to themselves or others. That's the group that we're focusing on because the issue of homelessness is very, very broad. And it's our feeling that it's that particular subset that poses the greatest risk to our peace of mind and uh, the sanctity of our community here in Sherman Oaks. So we're working with, uh, with CD4, we're working uh, with, um, <coughs> with the, uh, the city supervisor, and I want to uh, congratulate and welcome our new city attorney here tonight, um, Heidi Feldstein Soto. And I, I say Feldstein and not Stein because I understand that's the, the correct pronunciation. Feldstein. 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 So I want, I want to thank you for correcting me. Coming from New York, everybody was uh, Feldstein, Epstein. And then in California, it's all Stein. It took me 25 years to get used to Stein. And so I apologize for mangling it now. Uh, but welcome, congratulate, uh, congratulations on uh, on your election. You have our support fully. We appreciate that. Um, at the May meeting of uh, this group, next month is uh, Council Member Nithya Raman. The month after, we're going to have a roundtable discussion on the homelessness issue. We're inviting members, uh, leaders from the community, and elected officials. I want to extend an invitation to your office. Um, Madam City Attorney, to send a representative to participate in this discussion centered specifically around the issue of what can we do to further empower law enforcement in Sherman, in uh, Los Angeles, and specifically in Sherman Oaks, to remove people from the streets that pose a threat to themselves and others. And when I say remove them, I don't necessarily mean voluntarily. I mean voluntarily or involuntarily. And we understand that it's a morass of laws that conflict, that there are constitutional rights and claims. Um, and it's, it's a complicated issue, but we want to get into it and find out what changes could be made. And we'll have some questions tonight about this. Let, let's start by having more people apply to be police officers. We are at an all time low. Okay. That. We will definitely get into that. I thank you for your time. Thanks for the support of the Homelessness Committee. We're trying to be part of the solution. So thank you. So I uh, head the legislative committee, and I'm hoping you're reading my articles every month about housing and state legislation and the housing element. They're all very complicated and complex and hard to understand. We used to have Heidi as a friend who used to help us understand some of these bills years ago. But I want you to, I'm trying to explain them as easily as I possibly can with the one paragraph that I usually get in the newsletter, um, because it's important for all of you to be aware of it, and it's important because it affects all of us. The state has, in the last several years, methodically removed local control over land use issues from cities, which makes it po very possible that we'll see a lot of uh, density with very little input from us. So our committee and the committee of the vision committee of the neighborhood council have gotten together and we've tried to come up with solutions on how we could do more housing without adding uh, rezoning our single family and our multifamily neighborhoods, which are the more affordable uh, multifamily. And we have presented this to the planning department and they like our ideas, uh, but just because they like them doesn't mean they're gonna apply them. So we do have meetings with the mayor's office next month. Uh, we're hoping to work with them. We continue to try to work with council member Raman because she's not quite on board with us on not necessarily needing to upzone our single family neighborhood. So we're working together, we're hopeful. And if I'm not clear on what I'm saying in my newsletter, contact me. I do have my email address. So, I'm available and I'll try to explain it. So thank you very much. 
Again, thank you to our, our, our every board member. We do uh, you guys do an amazing job. I think mean, again, the amount of work that these folks, the amount of knowledge that these guys have had is absolutely fantastic. Um, and, and again, just, just so that you're aware, um, the meeting that, that, that Larry's talking about in two months at our homeowner association meeting. It's going to be fantastic. You guys should definitely mark your calendar for that as well. But it's going to be a department head and different uh, folks from the county, from the city. And again, this is a, a, a coordinated effort that Larry and his committee is putting together. Um, you're going to want to be here for this. It's going to be very, very uh, important. So um, I have uh, been part of the SOHA for years and years and years, as you know. And I, I, I see politicians come and go. Um, and I, and, I, and I had the opportunity to listen to uh, uh, our new city attorney um, during our debate. I think it was one debate or two debates, two. And um, spoke to her briefly on, on, on different subjects in the past. I had the honor, and I, and I want to say, I don't use that word often, but I had the honor of meeting with her one-on-one -on -one about a month and a half, two months ago. And I was very impressed. I was very impressed with this, this pitfall. This woman who came to the table, and I did not know who she was, and I did not, I mean, I, I could read about it, I, I heard her campaign when, during the debate, um, and the ideas that she has, I think, are very, very good for the city of Los Angeles, very good for the city. Um, if she does half of them, I think the city will be uh, in a lot better place than it is right now. So, um, and, and, and again, she's somebody that I don't think takes no very easily. I think she's a, a, a person that's going to, Take the challenge and 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 hang with it, which we really need. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to hearing what she has to say tonight. So Heidi, why don't you come up here and tell us a, a few words about yourself? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, That's Mark, right? Mark FC. Okay, just a no, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I can't get it. Doesn't matter. Wait, do I have to sit on this? You know, I brought these two Good. That's your talk. Okay, I brought these last time. This our, our last week we sat down too low and I felt like Santa Claus. Um, but anyway, you want to stand? I can't I can't sit here standing. Okay. So why don't you tell us, why don't you tell the audience a little bit about yourself? And then we've got a bunch of questions and um the questions were all sent in. Uh they're all top ball questions, so they'll be perfect for you. This is Soho, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought he was going to make me speak without my So there we go. No, you can speak with the other one. Sure. This it's is the audience. Uh, it's what? really lovely to see everyone here. Uh, so thank you very much for this opportunity. I'm really excited to be back here. Um, and it is my first appearance at Soho as an elected official. So thank you. I want to. I want to thank you, Matt, um, for dinner at your Um, uh, I urge everyone to go and be better and for hosting the night. Um, I want to thank Maria and Jeff for their friendship and their support. I wouldn't be here without folks like you, so thank you very much. Um, I thank Bob and John Eisen and Jay Weisberg, all of whom were really helpful during the campaign. Now, before I get started, there's a bunch of folks here from my office. That I think that you need to know, and so I'm going to introduce them. So first and foremost, your neighborhood prosecutor, Andy Solomon. Sitting there in a tie, a former opposing candidate, Kevin James, a special assistant city attorney, and helping me get around and navigate City Hall. Um, over here with the top on is Ms. Donette Garcia, who is the Director of Community and Government Relations. Um, sitting to her, next to her is Brian Petilli. Uh, he is the grant supervisor for our Van Nuys grant and will be supervising most of the Valley um, operations, including our Valley neighborhood prosecutors. Along with the North Valley Grant Supervisor. Um, Ethan Weaver is another neighborhood prosecutor in the country. And the way that you can see two guys chatting, those are Cedric Placentia and John Marco. So thank you. Um, all right, for those of you who don't know anything about 
and I, I don't know if that's true because it's Women's History Month. Uh, I'll focus for a minute on some of the uh, last things that we're shattering this year. Uh, yes, Karen Bass is our new mayor, and I hope we get them to the way from time to time. But here's the truth I'm the first woman to be elected as city attorney. The third. And I would say it's about a darn and time. I also happen to be the first Latina ever elected to city office. And in a city that is 50 some odd percent Latino, um, I think that's a milestone in and of itself. I was born and raised in San Francisco, Rico. So Spanish is my original language. Um, and I went to college and law school in English. So I'm much more comfortable speaking legalese in English and speaking emotion in Spanish. Okay, that's kind of uh, I've been living in LA though for 40 years. I came here out of law school in 1982. Uh, yes, I'm dating myself. I'm turning 65 this year. And this is my home. Um, I refuse to leave my home without trying with all my heart, with all my soul, and with all my dreams to do everything I can to fix what I can within my own office and within City Hall. Um, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about my job because I thought I knew what the job was when I ran. Mm -mm. Didn't have a clue. Uh, I have to say uh, that I lead at this point the largest municipal law firm in the country. Also happens to be the best there are over a thousand legal professionals in my office, uh, about 550 of the lawyers and the balance, everything from investigators and hearing officers, and mediators, legal secretaries, paralegals, um, clerks, witness coordinators, victims assistance folks, and yet the school of supervisors and managers were, were trying to flatten the management structure a bit, but um, it's a big office. Now, as big as the office is, it's not nearly as big as it does. So let's break it down. I am the general counsel for the largest utility, public utility in the country, otherwise known as the LHWP. And just to add, no, this please, we're doing our job with the best we can at this point, okay? And trust me with all the water that we've had and what's happening to the aqueduct system, I want to commend seriously the people who work at the LADWP for working all weekend last weekend to prepare us and to prevent really bad flooding that otherwise could have hit us. And that in and of itself is a big job. I'm also the LA as a general counsel for Lala, the Los Angeles World Airports. Okay, and it's technically three airports. Uh, it is LAX, Van Nuys, and they call Homedale an airport. Okay, we're going to start over again. <laughs> but that business in and of itself in the normal world would be a fortune company. Okay, I'm the general counsel for the harbor and the port. The harbor and the port in and of itself is another fortune 1000 company. And I'm the general counsel for another 17 elected officials. You want to try that one on for size? Not to mention the Board of Public Works, the Department of Parks and Recreation, the Department of Cultural Affairs, uh, the Housing Department, Pacwell, Lassa, you name it. Every city commission, every city agency, every city employee. My office has three functions, five in charter. We do a lot of other things. But my charter of responsibility is first and foremost to provide municipal advice and counsel and act as transactional counsel for the city of Los Angeles and all of its boards and departments. So we staff all those public meetings, all the Brown Act meetings. Um, we staff 
uh, the commission meetings, we staff the council committee meetings. If you've ever watched the city council meeting and you see the poor gentleman who's sitting in the chair talking to Paul Kerkorian and saying, uh, yes, I've got that. Please, over there, uh, Sergeant Environ, this gentleman's disrupting the meeting. Please escort him out. That would be strapped out. And God bless him, I could not keep the poker face that he keeps during those meetings that my life depended on. He does a fabulous job. And we have lawyers in all of the public hearings across the city. My office rents every law, and yet we have put out a big sign that has said to the world, no more lobbyists or developer job drafted documents will be accepted here. So we are starting our drafting. Um, we draft and approve every written contract for the city and all of its departments. Um, no, I'm not personally approving every, every contract anymore. I did for a little bit when I first stepped in, just to get a sense of it, but also to make sure that we were properly applying the competitive bidding procedures of the city charter. That was one of my campaign promises, and yes, we've done that. And the word has gone out that, and it isn't that you don't ever approve some of your contracts, but of course you do. I mean, you bought some heavy equipment and you're, or you bought a software system and you need maintenance, you're not necessarily going to put the maintenance work on a proprietary software program out of the competitive bid. You're going to go back to the vendor who did the program and who's giving you a warranty. Yeah. Right, because the last thing you need to do is, is jeopardize the expensive program. But short of something like that, short of really a, a, a weighty issue that falls within the charter exception, we are enforcing the competitive bidding procedures or putting out RFPs, including for my own office. Okay, so we, for example, are bidding out a management and training program for our supervisors, and we put that out on an RFP. Everything that we're doing, uh, we're putting out for competitive bidding. So that's kind of the municipal work and the municipal branch. My office is also under the charter a shield. What do I mean by that? We do defensive litigation. Uh, we represent the city in everything from a trip and fall uh, to roadway design cases to sidewalks to police litigation to commercial contract and business and complex lit. And our litigators trying to handle most of that in-house. I have openings for like 20 civil litigators at this point in time. So please, if any of you know of civil litigators who want to come work for the city, or hire. It's on our website. Um, and that is a charter obligation that I must. There's a third term of obligation. I am responsible for the prosecution of misdemeanors within the city of Los Angeles. That's my term of obligation. That has been expanded. If you look at the scandals that are wrong, city companies, most of them have been in the area of planning and land use and building and things. So by putting all of that in its own branch, by hiring someone who I've known for seven years to be an excellent lawyer and a citizen of impeccable integrity, I put that branch in a place where it is visible, where at least with respect to my office, I don't want any more questions of whether there are any issues like LADWP. My lawyers are doing our job. And we're doing it well. Um, I hired a gentleman who I think some of you may know by the name of John Heath to head up uh, the real estate branch. John started at Fairview Six. Um, and I like to tease him, but he set the ground running. It has been a lot of it. Uh, the other thing is we have been side by side with the mayor's office, quietly, but side by side with the mayor's office on her city program. So our office drafted all the emergency declarations that enable things to be sped up to really do some um, outreach and bringing people inside and onto the streets. Um, our lawyers spent last weekend 
um, and the whole weekend. I mean, you don't go into public service to be working 24 seven with this company. Um, but they spent all last weekend drafting the first set of documents for the mayor's inside safe program from Skid Row to the LA Grand Company. Uh, we have participant agreements and we have the, the, the indemnifications and the insurance forms that we need. Uh, and that we started at eight o'clock on Monday morning, and we are bringing people indoors from Skid Row. Uh, the last piece of news, and I know I'm going to get questions about it, but I'm happy to answer them. Is that as of Monday, um, I have reorganized the criminal branch of our office. It was in a structure that had not been touched for thirty years. When I asked for memos on ethical laws and how the branch was structured. I got memos that dated back to 1979 or 1989. And obviously a lot has changed since then. Um, and so we, we are underway. It should be invisible from your perspective. Um, I get a lot of questions about the neighborhood prosecutor program and I'm not trying to stop questions. You're welcome to ask them. But there's a lot of misinformation out there that I would like to claim. Um, the neighborhood prosecutor program is going to continue. You will continue to call and call here for as long as you want to stay with the office. There is very little that's changing with the following exception. I had 26 lawyers embedded at police stations and bureaus all over the city. Um, really doing God's work in some ways, but in other ways, it's not a very manageable structure. Um, and I had branches all over the city that are dying for lawyers, where they don't have more than one lawyer per quarter. So my branches can't take vacations, they can't get sick, they can't get sick. And they can't take advantage of a telework program. Because when you only have that number of lawyers and you only have one per courtroom, you can't say to the judge, God will be with we're not covering your courtroom this way. Uh, that goes over my defense. I had vertical prosecution units that were developed 20 years ago. So I had a gang and guns unit that was created at a point in time when our office was responsible for administering 48 gang and guns. Ask me how many gang injunctions we have today. Zero. Okay, they were all illegal by the books in 2018. Can't have gang injunctions. And before I started restructuring any of this, I talked to a bunch of the lawyers, including the lawyers of the gang unit. And I said, well, what if we wanted to prosecute a gang injunction? Could we do it? No, you can't. Okay, and why have an entire vertical prosecution division devoted to that? Uh, they will continue with their expertise when we get gang questions and when we get nuisance activity in a community. We will have our neighborhood prosecutor, we will have our vertical gang unit prosecutor, but when they don't have an active trial, when they don't have a neighborhood meeting, when they don't have something that requires them to be doing that kind of work, they will be in our branches and helping with the calendar so that everyone can telework, so that everyone who's in public safety is devoted to the same cause with a shared mission. When they are overworked, we can bring in our branch deputies to back them up. Um, I'll give you another example. We had a specialized family violence team. And I'm a big, big advocate of protecting ourselves against domestic violence and family violence. 42% of the unsheltered women on our street are fleeing domestic violence. 60 some odd percent of the migrants on our street are the result of the family violence. And so I want nothing more than to elevate them. But here's the truth. We had an entire specialized unit that dealt with 14.49% of our domestic violence cases. And over 85% of our cases were in our branches. And our branches didn't get training and didn't have the specialized expertise to handle those cash. So by redistributing our family violence prosecutors out to the branches, 
I'm not taking away their four months ago. They will continue to handle the most difficult, sensitive matters on a vertical prosecution, but they will be in the branches where they can grab a branch deputy to sit second chair and learn what they do so that my branch deputy get better at handling the 85% of the cases. Um, I'm trying to really open up the practice. I'm trying to give lawyers an opportunity uh, there are criminal lawyers who've been in crim for the last 20 years and said, if we're doing it this way, I may want to go try and do contract work for the civil division. Please let me do that. I'm like, of course. Yeah. We're going to staff the office in a way where people can have a career path and grow without getting pigeonholed and seeing every problem as a, as a nail because the only tool they have. Um, with that, I'm done talking about the office and what and me, and I will take whatever questions you want to throw my way. Go ahead and make them so. Thank you. 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 So I'm not I'm not going to use the microphone. It's okay. I'm not going to use the microphone. Is anyone in the back not able to hear me? Okay, didn't think so. So these questions are not from me, Heidi. These are from the audience. Um, so if you get mad, you that? <laughs> okay, so the, the first question, the first two questions are the biggest issue that folks have, you know, we, we kind of miss have complaining about potholes. Our biggest issue right now is homelessness or, or the unhoused. So the first question is from our, our chair of the uh, uh, unhoused committee, Larry Slade. Larry, you want to raise your hand so she can talk to you? Where is Larry? He left. He didn't want to hear uh, I think he's uh, in the back. Anyway, um, what would the single most effective change in the law, uh, state or local, that you could empower the city attorney's office to remove the unhoused that poses a threat to themselves or the safety of others? You require a constitutional amendment, okay, that um, would permit uh, conservatorship on less of the standard than we have today. Right now, the standard for conservatorship are effectively somebody has to be literally so out in their mind cannot tell the difference between um, reality and fantasy, and they have and they have to close an immediate or proximate danger to themselves or their person. So the large streets have become the equivalent of an open air asylum, and as long as you have people who aren't in a position to care for themselves. You have a problem. Um, in June of 2021, uh, the Court of Appeals up north ruled that you cannot hold even a violent serial offender who is incompetent to stand on for longer than 28 days without releasing them or providing them with medical treatment and a psychiatric bed. We have no psychiatric bed. We have no place to put them. So we put them in county jail, and if they're not treated within 28 days, they're back out on the street, including violent serial offenders. Okay, that's the problem. Um, and it doesn't have to rise to the level of felony. You know, someone can just come up and punch you, but that's what the courts have done to us. Uh, the county, is the good news is, the city has declared a state of emergency. The county has declared a state of emergency. And we are in a situation where we are trying to meet people where they are and get people inside safe, one at a time, the kind of care that they need. That doesn't just mean a low health, that doesn't just mean housing first. If you think about some of the folks coming in on the street, you need clothing, you need vouchers for housing going forward. You need general training. You need vouchers for food. If you've ever gone down to South Figueroa and seen the human trafficking that takes place, something like 70% or more of the young folks, and it's not just girls, okay, but the young people who are on our streets being trafficked come out of our foster care system. They are either wards of the Japanic court or they are aged out of foster care. And they get taken to the streets, they get branded on their forehead by pimps, 
They lose everything. No identification, no driver's license, no passport, no ID, no money, no clothing, except the standardly obvious clothing of a sex worker. That strip cannot be cured by arresting sex workers. Okay? They're victims in this. That stress can only really be cured by providing a path out for the victims and by shutting down those who profit by motels, um, shutting down hotels, and shutting down camps. Sorry, I got off topic. That, that's where so, it's going. So, so uh, at our last meeting, we had uh, our new county supervisor. We talked about the um, the county the the failure of the uh, foster care kids uh, get, basically getting aged out and going to the street, hit the streets. So that's a that's something that, that she she is looking into, and the, hopefully the supervisor are looking into as far as creating a system, some type of a safety net for those folks. So we'll see what happens on that. So the second question on 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 the uh, unhoused is. Managers just talking to each other. You have to speak up. I'm, I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you. Um, and, and speaking of mics, this room is interesting. It's kind of like when we used to play with those cans and used to at the other end of the room. When folks are speaking in the in the back, like I can hear, like maybe Brent Cow, I can actually hear you talking right now. I'm serious. And you're back there. When Larry was talking back there with the, with the other folks, so it's a, it's this room is is. Um, it, it's not the best sound. So I, I, I know that um, you want to hear the speaker. So if you can keep your chin back to yourselves until afterwards, that would really be appreciated. And thank you for letting me know that you could hear me. So the next question from Jay Weisler. Jay, you want to raise your hand? Okay, so um, this is a different version of the question, that, that you, similar question. Um, if you can explain uh, what the police and the various city departments can do to remove unhoused person people, from the streets and sidewalks in the event that they are blocking entrances, that they're defecating or urinating in the public or otherwise creating an obvious disturbance. I think that she's been partnering with a number of council districts to do that. Okay, so correct me if I'm wrong on this uh, priority system that you're talking about. Um, the people, it's a grading system. Based on your needs, you get higher priorities. So that technically, the crazy, the, the drug uh, addicted person, the person that's hurting themselves, the person that's been out on the street longer, they get priority over somebody who is, and, and those people are typically not the folks that are, they've been offered housing before and they've turned it down. They typically can't stay housed. They can't stay housed. So those people are the priority people in this system. The people that are fresh on the street that need a hand, they, they need some support, they need some housing. They're at the lowest part. People that just lost their job that doesn't have a family member um, that, that in, in the community. Um, those people will be habitual homeless people if they don't get that 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 need. They're at the lowest priority. So you've got an interesting cat herding job as far as the job that you've inherited. But that system looks like I, I would think that um, the county supervisor, the, the new mayor, that your office is going to look at that priority system and hopefully reorganize it. And you already have a okay, good. I'd like to hear about that. But also. Um, you talk about the 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 housing needs. CD four has X amount of beds. If we have a homeless person that wants a bed and there's not a bed in CD four in, in in our council members district, she cannot go to somebody who is her next door neighbor council member who's got twenty open beds because that person is not going to go ahead and give them. They're not. That's the way the system is, is right now. So again, it's. When I say cat herders, you've got 15 different cats, and they're all going in the direction that they want to go in, but they're they're not. There is no sharing a bed within the city of Los Angeles right now. I'm going to be a little more optimistic than that. Okay, and I really am. Good. Um, our mayor um, has reached out all the way across the city. She is a coalition builder. That was not just a campaign speech. Um, she and I have lunch every Thursday. 
Um, she meets the council president on a regular basis. Um, she's very accessible and available to communities and to people across the city. I've seen a spirit of cooperation around the forty two in our city council. Now maybe it's the first hundred days kind of those. Um, but don't don't give me this. That was an optimistic one. Yeah, I, I will tell you, I think we are all focused. Um, I personally met with three of our county supervisors to talk about these issues and how we can help. Um, the city and the county are coordinating much better than the new head of Lawson. Um, and there is a force of nature in the mayor's office. And you may or may not remember her, but her name is Mercedes Marquez. And Mercedes was the secretary of, I think, labor um, under Obama. And before that, she was the head of the housing administration for the FA Wilson. It's an area she does well. And Minnesota is a hundred percent committed to going out there and finding shelter and then finding the interim housing that we need and then getting to permanent supportive housing so we can move people through the system and actually get them housed. Thank you. Did I say that, did I, did I say that this uh, new city turns the pencil? Um, uh, Shelly Port, are you here? Okay. So she had, she had an issue, or that issue with her was the uh, neighbor prosecutor, which you've already addressed. Um, Tom, and I just threw a blank on your last name. Uh, the, no, not Claire. The, the, uh, the, uh, on the CAC, are you here? Yeah. See here? Materna. Okay. So Tom Materna, who's probably on the Zoom call. Um, wants want to ask uh, for an update on the city of the uh, city of Los Angeles lawsuit against the uh, Burbank Airport expansion. Can, can you give any update on that? I can't spend any location. I will tell you that I have a meeting on it this week. I can't give an update on pending litigation to the extent there's not something to the court. I had a meeting on the lawsuit last week, okay, about ways to proceed. Um, I've been briefed, I'm aware of the lawsuit, and I'm aware of privileged communications with my client and sort of whatever communications there may be with the other side of this juncture. Um, I really can't talk about, um, but let's say that we're not going to surprise the community. How's that? Okay, so Tom Blick, he's in the back. Um, Tom has uh, two questions. I'm going to ask one, and then if we have time, we'll come back to the second one. But the public and privately approved project in our community, like um, along the Ventura Boulevard uh, specific plan, um, like that by uh, the, the Galleria, they, they established trust funds uh, to collect like fees for mitigating impacts that they're going to do through their expansion. When these trust funds are not being used or not being spent on Venture Boulevard in the areas, this particular trust fund that he's talking about is $9 million in this account right now. Um, and they're being spent on things unrelated or loosely related to these, uh, the real purpose. What does your office plan to do with these people asking for detailed accounting, like members of the Venture Boulevard uh, PRB, who have requested that your office uh, and, or, and, and the uh, City controllers be uh, accountable for this. Um, it's the first time I'm hearing of the issue. And I don't tend to speak off the top of my head without being prepared. Um, I don't typically handle cash accounts unless they are within the control of my office. So, like the 17200 trust funds that bring my 17200 litigation, I have visibility into that. Um, if you're if it's Quimby funds or FIN funds, I have no visibility into them. It's just not something my office administers. Uh, I don't know enough about this trust fund. If it's a result of a legal settlement, if someone will send me an email with the name of what it is, so I can find somebody within my office, I'm happy to look into it. But I don't know anything about it. Just so you know, so I'm going to give you these and these have the, the post emails so that you'll be able to respond. And then, for instance, David Rankow, raise your hand. 
David uh, bought 15 years ago the Sherman Oaks Gallery expansion, and there was X amount of millions of dollars that were put into that the Sherman Oaks Gallery at Douglas Emmett Company put into um, traffic mitigation funds to be spent in that in that community. Um, the city is spending that money on other areas, not necessarily that area. And I'm using that as an example, but um, but that's what that's what Tom is talking about as far as the nine the nine million dollar fund. But he'll he'll get back to you and somebody in your office. Um, okay, Maria, Maria, you have two questions. Um, why don't you stand up and ask? And I'm not going to have you do that. Um, so she, Marie wants to know, as the uh, city attorney, do you monitor state litigation currently being debated in Sacramento? Can you share your concerns or support for, for some of the uh, legislation uh, or uh, the city council and or the mayor, which could affect the city lobbying efforts? As Marie knows, I used to publish a newsletter where I summarized all of the bills coming out of Sacramento. Um, a couple of hundred in the member of year, just for fun. Um, I don't really have the time to do that. Uh, we do have a lobbyist who sent us a regular update from Sacramento, and we rely on the chief, legis uh, the chief legislative officer of the council who does bring more update of all pending legislation. I'm in the process uh, and as part of this new organization of that office to get people from within to monitor federal and state legislation more closely. Uh, it's just not something that in the last three months I've had a minute to pay attention to and I'm not kidding. I do know that the bill is a meaner it's a bad bill. No. Yeah, unless you're somebody up in Northern California and far as I did there. Um, okay, so I'm going to piggyback onto Jeff Calvin um, that question because there's a proposed Senate Bill SB 423. So this is, uh, it, it will override city zone. This is basically a bill that the city is going to be set up to fail. So this is something that you should have on the radio. Um, so it's, it's, it's it overrides the uh, city zoning law for four years until the next review period. Um, if half the number of housing units required by the regional housing assessment, the, the RENA are not issued, are not issued uh, building permits by halfway through the eight-year RENA cycle, the house and implementation of, of RENA numbers, if it's not completed by 2024. So Basically, what, 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 what's going on is given the fact that cities have no control over how many projects get submitted by developers, they're basically setting up Los Angeles to, uh, to, to, to fail at this system. Do you have any comments or concerns? Yeah. But I think for example, uh, City Council was considering an independent redistricting person, and there was a competing motion in Sacramento by Senator Russell to have the state take over independent redistricting of Los Angeles, and our City Council voted to oppose that bill on the grounds of protecting local control. So picking, piggybacking off of that, I would like to think that we could expand the city council interest into being more protective of municipal affairs. Someone came up tonight, and I don't remember who to talk about community plans. Let me please, please urge you. I don't care how boring it is. I don't care how much you think it's a yarn or how much time you think you have. The two community plans that we've done for South LA were successful because of the people from it in the process, and what South LA is able to do is confirm a community plan which gets to be along commercial corners and left the residential neighborhoods largely alone. And that is only the result of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours and people coming out and repeated and sitting down with planning and insisting on the vision of the work. And every time somebody in the planning said, well, what am I doing it this way? You had people in the community of the neighborhood saying, oh, this alternative or how this is 
So please, if I leave you with nothing else tonight, participate in your future, in your community, in your neighborhood. And if you don't participate, it will get done around you. Okay, I have two more, uh, two more maybe three questions. Um, and uh, I, I, I do have to do another one of those moments because you would think that, that our city council would be more active in the local um, zoning and the local issues having to deal with housing, and they have been silent. They have been, there, there has not been one city council member that I can think of, and Maria helped me if I'm wrong, that has really led the charge to preserve single family homes in the city of Los Angeles. Um, we, as a, the Sherman Oaks Home Association, has been very vocal with other, other communities in the valley and in the city. Um, and you know, to get them to even look at a safe bill is it's worse than fully key. So um, you would think. So again, your 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 comment is correct. They should be all over, it, but they're but they're not. Um, so anyway, Jay Weisler, that was a comment, not a question. Jay, um, um, as you know, uh, I. Um, approximately one third of the city council members that have been charged with corruption in the planning process, along with their other charges against lobbyists and other city employees. And, and I know you addressed it a little bit, but uh, he wants us a little bit more. Have you, have you, have you, have you established a task force to examine city corruption specifically? And what are your plans to investigate and possibly prosecute those involved in city corruption? You're not going to like my answer, Jack. <laughs> It's not my job. Okay, I have to get along with my clients. I am. It is not my job to investigate my own clients or prosecute. That would be an that would be an impossible conflict of interest. That's the DOJ's job. That's the Attorney General's job. That's the DA's job. Here's what my job is. I know to implement best practices to reduce the avenues of corruption. Okay, my job is to pay attention to the red flag corruption and to train my people and to train people around the city to stop them. So what have I done? I spoke to Martina Estrada, who is the assistant new attorney for the Central District of California, the DOJ has and he's a US district, and the DOJ has a task force on red flags and fraud and procurement. Uh, we have two DOJ lawyers doing a Zoom call from uh, San Francisco. I think I have a target around 500 students. And we are training not only the lawyers in Los Angeles, but we spoke to the mayor's office. He wants to send people. She's asking the PAO to send people to the procurement office of the city. And we're making the opportunity available to all the city council members to train them on what to watch for in terms of red flags for fraud. Um, I fenced a lot of contracts since I took office, much to the chagrin of the lawyers in my office, because I basically said, this doesn't look right. It's got to be put out for competitive bidding, or you have to prove up one of the exceptions to competitive bidding in the term. I actually got a call from a council member today with like, you changing all the contracting rules? And I was like, no, I'm not changing them. I'm just insisting that. So let's do a little follow up on that. Uh, your predecessor allowed this is from Tom Blair. Uh, your predecessor allowed a lot of significant cases unresolved, especially one that he was personally needed, like the Department of Water, the uh, uh, EDD billing scandal. How are you proceeding with these open cases? There's almost nothing left in the EDD scandal. There's a couple of bankruptcy cases in Arizona from one of the lawyers in Poland. I have verified with the attorney, the U.S. Attorney's Office, there is no employee in my office, no one currently under investigation for anything. Okay, so uh, that was the one question I had, and it's not about the rest of the city. I don't care. <laughs> it's not that I don't care, but it's, it's my office that I have control of. And so that's what I could do. The DWP, I satisfied myself as to the people I currently employ. And again, looking backwards, there are people doing that in the justice and other shoes they drop. 
in our county, the state bar is looking at that. It's, it's not me. Thank you. And um, so the last question, I think they were all softball questions, right? Yeah. So the the next softball, this is a very, very softball question. Right? Um, what do you guys think? Our new thing If I'm sitting down, I can see I, I um, So Sharon, right here. So this is a hardball question, okay? Can you do anything about new swimming pool permits being issued during drought times? I'll make that for the last question. I have no idea. The windows of City Hall East have not been cleaned in 30 years. I have asked that they be cleaned in order to be true to the drought. I have asked that they either be cleaned to dry or cleaned with reasonable wastewater. I won't care, but I will them clean. Thank you very much. And then the other challenge is third Wednesday of next month is Vindia. Third Wednesday the following month is our unhoused project. Before you guys see, please please throw your garbage away. Otherwise, you won't be here all the time. We don't want that. Uh, and thank you very much for coming, everybody.